The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Paulina Lovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Teta Blanche Ayuvea, your mathematics teacher. So before we begin the lesson of today, as usual, let us do the correction of the assignment of the previous lesson. Now we have as question, what is the sample space for tossing a coin twice? What is the sample space for choosing one letter at random from the set of vowels from the English alphabet? We are going to start by looking at the first question. The first question, what is the sample space for tossing a coin twice? So in our previous lesson, we said to look at this question, it will be easier for us to use a table. So if I take the first table for the first two doses, I have head, tail, head, tail. Now, if we toast the coin twice, we have the, if the first uh, toast can give us head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. Now, using the result from, the, from this table, we can now have what is expected from us to see a coin twice. We have here the results for this table. We have head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. To give us the three time toast. So we have here we toast the coin thrice. Two times can give us head, head, and there's another possibility that we can have head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, and tail, tail, head, finally, tail, tail, tail. So the sample space for tossing a coin thrice will simply be collecting all of this into a set. Then it will give the sample space for tossing a coin thrice. Remember we said you write them in a set. Head, 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 and so on. That is collecting all of this result in a set will give the sample space for tossing a coin thrice. Now the second question, what is the sample space for choosing a one letter at random from the set of vowels? Now we know that the set of vowels is the set A, A, E, O, U. That is for, from the English alphabet we know that the alphabet for french is different so to choose a letter from this set the sample space is just simply this set a a e o u since we have a set of vowels 
So we move straight forward by looking at our lessons under the subtopic probability and we have already seen two uh, topics and right now we are on the topic we have seen two lessons and right now we are on the lesson the probability of an event and now the probability of an event in this lesson we are just simply going to be giving values to the likelihood of occurrence of an event so as usual we begin our lesson by looking at the objectives prerequisite problem situation the learning activity then the application exercises and then we we'll conclude the lesson with an assignment so looking at the objective the objective of this lesson it will simply be for you to be able to determine the probability of an event and for you to smoothly follow this lesson you should already be comfortable to determine the cardinality of a given set and identify proper fraction so let us have some questions to verify the prerequisite we have the first here given the set u with subsets a equal to x is an even number b x is a prime number determine the cardinality of u now when you look at the set u with these three dots it simply means there are values from 3 to 20 just to minimize space so we look at the cardinality of u the cardinality of u will simply be to count all the elements of that set u which will be 20 and then the cardinality of a before we bring out the cardinality of a we need to know the elements in the set a and the elements in the set a we have even numbers 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 sorry 18 20 so the cardinality of a will simply be equal to 10 then b is the set prime numbers prime numbers starts from 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 and 19 and the cardinality of the set b will simply be 8 so we we'll look at the second question given the fractions identify the proper fraction or fractions so and we know that proper fractions are those fractions whereby the numerator is the value of the numerator is less than the value of the denominator and looking at this value this fractions here we have seven on three we have three and a half and then we have six on eleven now you see this the new value of the numerator here is greater than the value of the denominator so definitely this is not a proper fraction it's an improper fraction while this fraction here we have a whole number and a fraction which represents a mixed fraction so we have this as a proper fraction because the value of the numerator is less than the value of the denominator so we move straight forward to the problem situation we have here a table that is representing the statistics collected in a certain hospital in a certain locality where people presented themselves for blood donation let's assume that is the situation now if someone is or there is a need for uh, blood trans transfusion and they need blood group a what are the chances that a person chosen at random is of blood group a so we're going to follow the lesson together at the end of the lesson we look at the solution so we move straight forward to the activity given the set s with subset m where m is the set x is a multiple of three list the elements of the set m determine the cardinality of the set s 
and the set M. Hence, determine the ratio cardinality of M uh, on the cardinality of S. What is this ratio called? So we are just going to, we are reading through the steps of the activity, then we are going to do that later. The fourth stage of our activity is for each of the following experiments, flipping a coin, throwing a die once, state the, possibility, the possible outcome, find the possibility of each outcome, find the sum of all the outcomes in the sample space. What observation can you make for the sum What observation can you make for the sum of the possibilities of the outcomes? So we look at the first stage of our activity. Now we are given a set S and we are asked to determine the cardinality of the set S. What we did in the prerequisite, we simply count the number of elements in the set S. And if we count the number of elements in the set S, we are going to have 10. And the cardinality of M, we count the elements in the set M, we have three. So those are the values for the cardinality of S and M. Now we are asked to determine the ratio cardinality of M is to cardinality of S. We know that, or oh, we worked out the card, we determined the cardinality of M to be three and the cardinality of S to be 10. So the ratio here will simply be cardinality of M is to cardinality of S, which will be equal to three is to 10. So that is the ratio. And now what is this ratio called? Now you see, M is the set multiples of three. Those are numbers that were selected from the set S. And so those are the favorable outcomes or there's an experiment. The experiment is to select uh, multiples of three from the set S. And we came out with M to be equal to one, sorry, three, three, six, and nine. So we had this as the outcome of that experiment. So the chances for us to have multiples of three from the set S, we have here three out of 10 three numbers out of 10. So this ratio simply represents the probability of selecting multiples of three from the set S. So we call that probability which will be determined, which will be represented as probability of M, which is given by, you simply take the cardinality of the set M divided by the cardinality of the set S. So if you are given a sample space or you are given a set of elements and they ask you to give the probability of an event occurring, you simply look for the cardinality of that set divided by the cardinality of the sample space. For each of the following experiments, flipping a coin, throwing a die once, State the possible outcome. Find the possibility of each outcome. Now we have the first one, A, flipping a coin. When we flip a coin, we have a sample space, head or tail. Now you have the head or tail. We said, what is the probability of obtaining a head? We have here the probability of obtaining a head. We are having one out of two outcomes. So we're going to have probability of obtaining a head will be equal to the cardinality of obtaining a head 
on the cardinality of the sample space and that will give us one on two so we have here the same thing is going to happen if you take the probability of obtaining a tail so this will give us a head sorry probability of obtaining a tail will simply be the same as one on two so the probability of having a head is half and the probability of having a tail is half now looking at throwing a die once now when we will throw a die once you have sorry when we throw a die once we have the sample space we have either we can have one two three four five or six that is a sample space when we throw a die once so we have there as the sample space now we are asked to find the probability of each outcome now if i get the probability of one it will be the same as the probability for getting a two three four five or six now how do i get a probability of getting one now if i have here probability of having one is simply the cardinality of the set of getting one let me just represent it with one on the cardinality of the sample space now here the cardinality to the cardinality of the set of getting one is one divided by the sample space which ha we have here one two three four five six divided by the cardinality of the sample space which is six so the probability of each outcome in a set where we roll a die is one on six so if it is for one on six for one then it will be one on six for two for three four five and six so we continue with the next stage for each of the following experiments flipping a coin find the sum of all the possible outcomes in the sample space now we said flipping a coin we have a sample space head or tail now when we have the sample space uh, we are asked to look for the sum of all the possible outcomes now we deduced from the previous slide that the probability of obtaining a head is simply one on two and the probability of obtaining a tail is one on two so the sum of the probabilities will be probability of head, obtaining a head plus probability of obtaining a tail which will be equal to half plus half and this gives us one what observation can you make for what observation can you make for for the sum of the probabilities of the outcomes so the observation here is that when we take in a sample space when we take the uh, sum of the probability of all the outcome in this sample space the result gives one so looking at the same uh, the same situation in this question or this stage of activity we have throwing a die we said throwing a die we can either have one two three four five or six so they say find the sum of all the possible outcomes in the sample space now we deduce that the probability of getting a one is one on six two one on six probability of getting a six one on six the three dots here simply means it goes the same for three four five so the sum of the probabilities meaning i'm going to take one on six plus one on six plus one on six one on six So we have the probabilities of each outcome and if we add 
these probabilities correctly, we are going to have one. So, the same observation is given here that when we take the probability of each outcome in this sample space, the sum of the probabilities of the each outcome in that sample space, the result is simply equal to one. This carries us to a very big uh, concept in probability that when, there's, when, when given a sample space, the sum of the different outcomes, in the, the, the sum of the probability of the different outcomes in the sample space equal to one. So we have now a recall on what we have done so far. Given an event A of a sample space S, the probability of an event A is given by, so we said to get the probability of the event A, we simply take the cardinality of the set A divided by the cardinality of the set S. And probability of A will always lie within the range zero to one. We saw that in our previous lesson. And from this, range the sum of prob probabilities of all distinct outcomes in a sample space is equal to one given that the probability of an event is a proper fraction then if we have what we have just seen expressing that now mathematically we are going to have probability of a1 plus probability of a2 summing up all the probabilities of each outcome in a sample space will give us the value one. So we move straight forward to exercises to see if we have understood what we have done so far. The first question, a fair die is cast. What is the probability of obtaining a five a die is cast so the first thing we need to come out with is the sample space casting a die we have one two three four five six as the possible outcomes of that experiment now what is the probability of obtaining a five this is just a single value five so if i want to have five the the cardinality of that event obtaining a five is simply one and the cardinality of the sample space is six so what is the probability of obtaining a five the probability of obtaining a five will simply be cardinality of obtaining a five on the cardinality of the sample space which which is one over six an event num an even number sorry that is, we are looking for the probability of obtaining an even number when a die is cast. Now, when a die is cast, that is the sample space. Now, obtaining an even number, let us name that set even number E. If I say the set E is a set of even numbers obtained when a die is rolled, we have two, four, six. Now, to get the probability of obtaining an even number, we look for the cardinality of E, which is three. That's the possible outcome for that event. Um, and the cardinality of S is already given, which is six. So we have here probability of obtaining an even number will simply be cardinality of E on the cardinality of S, which is equal to three on six and you could leave your answer like that but it's always good to simplify so and we, we simplify that we'll have half that will be the probability of obtaining an even number when a die is cast then a factor of 12 now to have the factor of 12 from this set let us name this event t 
say the factor of 12 and the factor of 12 we have 1 2 3 4 and 6 those are factors of 12 so what would be the cardinality the the probability the probability of obtaining a factor of 12 will simply be taking the cardinality of t on the cardinality of the sample space and this will be equal to 1 2 3 4 5 5 on 6 so that will be the probability of obtaining a factor of 12 when a die is cast the second question we have in a class of 35 students there are 20 girls find the probability that a student chosen at random is a boy now we have been given the number of girls and the total number of students in the class so it is just proper that we get number of boys by subtracting 20 the number of girls from the total number of students which gives 15 so there are 15 boys in that class so we have here the cardinality of that of choosing a boy will be 15 and the cardinality of let's say the sample space s let me call it s of the total number of students in class equal to 35 i was giving the question so what would be the probability of choosing a boy it will simply be the cardinality of the number of boys or the number of boys in the class divided by the no, no total number of students in the class which is equal to 15 on 35 and here we have five can go five we have three on seven so that is the probability of choosing a boy from such class a bus transports 30 passengers in one particular trip there were 18 girls and 12 mothers find the probability that a passenger chosen at random is a male now when you look at this question you see that they have you look at first of all the number of girls and the number of mothers and if you add 12 plus 18 it gives that total 30. so which means there is no way we are going to obtain a, a situation whereby a male is being selected so this is an impossible event this is an impossible event and so the probability the probability let me first of all uh, name it let the event let m be the event choosing choosing a male you see that this event cannot occur because the passengers there all together are girls and mothers only so the probability of getting a male is zero that's an impossible event find the probability that a student selected at random from from one class is of age less than 17. well before any student is admitted into form one there is a law that that student is not supposed to be above the age 17. so it is just obvious that any student you meet in form one will be of age less than 17. and if i should name this event t let's say let t be the event choosing choosing a student less uh, of age less than 17. so you see the probability of obtaining this is one because it must happen is sure so this is an, a sure event a jar contains two green four blue three yellow and two black marbles all identical 
but for the colors. A marble is chosen at random from the jar. Find the probability that the marble chosen is yellow. The very first thing you need to do with such a question, you have to bring out the sample space. So we have here, the sample space, we have two green, four blue, three yellow, and two black marbles. So we take the cardinality of the sample space, let's call the sample space S, will be two plus four plus three plus two. And this will give us 11. Then I'll find the probability that the marble chosen is yellow. The cardinality of obtaining yellow or the cardinality of yellow gives you the total number of uh, marbles that are yellow which we have there as three so the probability of obtaining a yellow marble will simply be three on eleven so we move straight forward to the next question the table below shows the flow of traffic over the mongo bridge on a particular day here we have a table Find how many vehicles in all passed over the bridge by 4 p.m. Now, when you look at the table, you see from here we have from 8 to 4 p.m. And now when they say you should look for the number of vehicles that passed over the bridge from, uh, by 4 p.m., we simply have to take the sum of all the number of cars there. And if we have to add, let's just begin by adding from column to column. We have... To it. We have 10, 13, 20, we have 55, 7, 9, 10, we have 100 here, we have uh, 5, 9, 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we have 3, 8, 18, 30, 40. So adding all of that, so we say the total number of vehicles, we are going to have 190. Then, sporadic checks are made on the bridge by the police between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Find the probability that a car checked at random is a truck. We simply get the non total number of trucks. So the probability of getting, let's say, truck, will simply be 40 on 190. So we, if we simplify that, we're going to have 4 on 19. So we are still on that same question. Find the probability that a car checked at random between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. is a taxi. Take note that the time here, we are still from 8 to 4 p.m. So from 10 a.m., this is what we have, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is um, a taxi. So we are going to settle here. But before that, we have to calculate the probability of the sample space. The sample space will just be for this area because it took about a time. No, we have here from 8 to 4. So we are still working with Okay, so we are working with 10 to 4. So the sample space will be for this area. So we're going to have here 8, 84. We have here 39. We have here 30, 37. So we have here the sample space, the cardinality of the sample space. The cardinality of the sample space here will be 80, 160. Then, find the probability that the car checked at random between that is a taxi. So looking for taxis, the sum of cars, the number of cars for taxi there, let me say taxi T, is equal to 84. So the probability of getting a taxi will simply be 84 on 160. And if we should simplify that, we're going to have two, if we take four, four here two times, four here one, 
4 here, 4. We will have 21 on 40. That will be the probability of getting a taxi within that period of time. Now, find the probability that a car checked at random between 12 noon and 4 p.m. So, here we are going to take this particular question as the homework. The statistics that we are going back to the problem situation and we are asked that if what would be the chance that a person chosen at random is of blood group a so the total number of uh, people that presented themselves in that hospital we will have to add let's call the total number of people there s which will be equal to if we add all of that we're going to have 50 plus 65 plus 70 plus 15 that will give us we have here 115 185 195 200 so we have 200 people that presented themselves and the probability of having blood group A will simply be 50 for blood group A on 200. And this will give us one on four. So we, we come to the end of this lesson and let's take this assignment to consolidate what we have done in the lesson. The numbers from 1 to 20 are printed on cards and put inside a bag. A card is selected at random. Find the probability of selecting. We have an odd number, a prime number, a multiple of 2, a factor of 19. So looking at the second question that is similar to what we have already done, we will take these questions and the next class we are going to look at them. So for further reading, you can consult these books. The next lesson we are going to be looking at will be complementary and compound events. Mane tambia ninya ne injobia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne injobia yen 